Okay, today we're going to start learning about cutting cards, or the evidence that we use in debates. Now, it's important to keep in mind that a piece of evidence basically has three parts. You have the tag, which we'll worry about last. Then you have the site. Now, the site kind of has two miniature parts. There's the part that you read in a debate round, which is just the author's last name and the date. And then you have the larger part of the site, which tells us um, the qualifications of the author, as well as where all of it comes from. Now, the first thing, however, that we're going to worry about is the piece of evidence itself. Now, this text was taken from an online article that I just copy and pasted into a Word document. Now, the first thing that we want to do is we want to take out all of these hyperlinks. Now, hyperlinks will make it harder for you to uh, underline as well as highlight because it will not let you select just half of the, um, well, not, it won't let you select just half of the hyperlink. And so it's important to take those out first. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to condense this because, see, we have these large spaces that will take up more room and will make you have to scroll more often when you're reading through evidence. Now, you can either go up here and click the Condense button or you can press the F3 button on your keyboard, like it says, and that'll help us condense it. Now, the next thing we can do is we can actually hit Control-A. Control-A will highlight everything in the Word document. We can go up here and we can clear, or we can hit F12 on the keyboard. Now, this will make all the text uniform uh, with the uniform default verbatim style, which is Calibri 11. Now, the next thing that we need to do is decide which parts of, these, of this piece of evidence we want. So, for example, this piece of evidence is talking about how Obama spent political capital by pushing through fast track trade authority, which is a piece of legislation favored largely by Republicans as opposed to Democrats. Now, usually, you don't want to alienate your base as a president. And so this perhaps cost Obama quite a bit of political capital. Now, thus far, we don't have to worry too much about uh, making it really short because we can do that for more with highlighting. Now, the next important thing is after you have, so we don't really need this next part right here. And so after you've highlighted what you need and you want to skip down a little bit further in the piece of evidence, just hit control after you've already highlighted something. And then you can highlight something further down without highlighting the whole paragraph. Okay. So this is now the part that we want underlined. And so to underline, you can either hit F9, or you can either click the underline button up here, or you can hit F9 on your keyboard. It is generally faster to use the keyboard commands. Now next, we want to go up here and hit shrink. Now what this button does is it shrinks everything that was not underlined into size 8 font. Now the nice thing is, is it will only do it by paragraph, which is why condensing is important. And it also will not do it if there's nothing underlined. So you don't have to worry about accidentally turning all of the font on a piece of on, on, a, on a given page into size 8 font. Next, we want to make this a little bit shorter by highlighting stuff. So the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is a Republican. So it's pretty redundant to say with, with Republicans and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. And Fast Track is a trade authority bill. If you have a judge that would need that explained, then, well, first of all, you probably shouldn't be running a politics disad in the first place. But also, that's something that you can explain in your speech and doesn't necessarily have to be explained in the evidence. Same with acronyms. You can highlight just the acronym so that it's faster for you to read the card, and if necessary, then later go back and explain what TPP would be in your speech. We also don't need things like titles. We know that Obama is the president, and we know his first name is Barack. There's no reason to have that highlighted. Same with uh, all of these different groups. Labor unions, environmentalists, and consumer activists are all part of the Democratic base. And so we simply just need the base of his party because we know that Obama is a Democrat. We also don't need things like the specific vote number unless this is about uh, what bill is going to get passed. This is a bill that already happened. So we don't really need to know the margin at which it passed. Now, this is going to be the key warrant for what this piece of evidence is for. This piece of evidence is to say that Obama lacks political capital. And so this line right here that says Obama not only expended his own political capital by pushing for fast track is kind of the big line. 
And this is also a really good line uh, because it shows the uh, scale to which Obama had to spend political capital. He spent it of the entire Democratic Party because elections are coming up. So any move that the Democratic president makes has an effect on Democratic candidates running in 2016. And that's just, you don't really need, again, all of these different groups, but if you say either sides with workers or with Wall Street, that has a nice ring to it. Oh, and see right here, I accidentally did not highlight on. We'll go back and fix that in a second. Or underline on, excuse me. Now, this is all that we need highlighted. So, if you figure that you, you know, need a word that you didn't underline, you can just go back and hit F9. And if you want to highlight, again, you can just hit F11. That's not actually labeled up here. Or, yes, it is. Excuse me. Uh, you can hit F11. And if you want to change the color, if you don't prefer yellow, if you prefer green or blue or pink, then that's where you can edit that. Now, the next thing that we want to do is take out the space between this and the site so that you don't have to scroll as often. And then we want to indent it to make sure that you're not confusing the site with the card. Now, next up, we need to talk about the parts of a site. So, you need the author's full name first and last, though not necessarily in the same place. The only thing that goes into what you read are the author's last name and the date. The rest of it, the author's first name and middle initial if listed, uh, goes right here. And then you want a comma. And then you want what their uh, job title is or what their credentials are. So, Professor of History at California State Sacramento. Next, you want the title of the article, which is, you know, in quotations. Next, you want where you got the article. If you're cutting it from an academic journal, what you want to keep in mind is that you need uh, the issue of the journal as well as the page that you got this from. Next, you need the date and then where you found it. If you found it from a book, you obviously are not going to have a URL. So this is really only for uh, evidence that you found online. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to come up here and we're going to make this site format. So that's F8 on your keyboard. This will make it bold so that it's easier for you to see. Next thing we want to do is we do want to make this a little bit smaller so that it doesn't get in the way. Now, the smallest you can have this is size 8. Anything else is against Keisha rules. So you make that size 8 font. That way it's nice and easy and concise for you to see. Now, the last thing that you want to do is the tag. Do the tag last uh, because it is a... Uh, it's, you know, it's a summary of the piece of evidence, so you really don't want to tag it until you know what the piece of evidence says uh, by highlighting and underlining it. Yeah, and for our tag, we want something nice and concise, gets the point. It doesn't need to, you know, have a lot of literary flair. And then to make our tag, the important thing is we need to hit F7. Again, you can hit this button or F7 on your computer. And then this is really important. It shows up right over here. So when you're making a file, for example, you'll want to say politics updates. And this will be sort of the name of the file. And so you can have this as the largest, uh, the largest header possible, which is our pocket. See how it's like See how the tag is more indented than your pockets? The next thing, this would be something that the affirmative team would read. Or if we, if we didn't want to label it based on which side we would read it, we would label it on the part of the argument. This is an internal link argument. So we would label it that way. And next, you want to make this a block title. And then if you have a lot of different cards that are under this title, this acts as a way for you to be able to easily navigate really long documents. Usually politics updates aren't going to be really long documents, but it's still an important skill for you to know. Then you want to go and save it to the appropriate place on the Dropbox.